Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together in this broadcast to celebrate Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And we bring before the Lord our own lives and the life of our world at this time, asking him for mercy and forgiveness as we gather together around this table. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, adore you, you, we glorify you. you. We give, give you thanks, thanks for your all great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are taking away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all, e for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, in the land of Egypt. This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, 
when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lamb in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. In this manner you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations you shall observe it as an ordinance forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will, I will call on the name of the Lord. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, 
to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, I want to welcome you as we begin together in a rather strange way for many of us, this Tridium, to celebrate the Holy Tridium. We are normally in our churches, in our communities, but this year we are unable to do that. And yet, it is still good to be with you. As you well know, in the last few weeks, the eyes of the world have been focused on a virus that has literally engulfed the whole world. Emotions have run high. There has been fear and panic and anxiety. For many people across the world now, governments have locked down. And that has been the order of the day for a number of days. We know this all too well here in South Africa. In some ways, we've been asked in these days to step beyond ourselves, to step beyond our normal way of life. We have been asked to do that in an extraordinary way, not just for our own good, but also for the common good, for one another. And it struck me preparing for this Holy Thursday, this in many ways extraordinary Holy Thursday, the Gospel presents us with a God who does just that, steps beyond himself. We hear in the Gospel that Jesus knew that his hour had come. With the Last Supper, Jesus' hour had arrived, the goal to which his whole ministry was directed from the beginning. And if we read that text carefully in St. John's Gospel, he uses two words. It is the hour of his departing, but it is also the hour when he loved them to the end. And these two phrases are inseparable. And the lens, I suggest, through which we see the liturgy today and indeed our lives in this most extraordinary time of lockdown. Let's reflect a little bit on the hour. This is the hour of Jesus' great stepping beyond himself, going further 
than what was expected and what was imaginable at the time. God in Jesus descends not only in the realm of fallen humanity in the Incarnation, but right now, today we hear, descends even further, literally to the floor, to wash the feet of his friends. The goal of this descent is the adoption and assumption of our humanity, and not only the adoption and assumption, but bringing us back into the realm of God, a realm which was lost. Jesus sums up perhaps his whole ministry in this one symbolic act. He divests himself of his divinity and, we are told, doing so symbolically lays aside his garments and then he kneels before us. He washes and dries our soiled feet, not asking why they are soiled, in order to make us fit to sit once again at the table of the Lord. And notice, he doesn't just simply want us to fit. He raises us into the realm of God in this visible and powerful gesture. He also says, you should do as I have done to you. And so Jesus invites us tonight to divest ourselves of attitudes, of social standing, of possessions and academic achievements, status and power, the trappings of the world in which we live, in order to wash and dry the soiled feet of our brothers and sisters. For Jesus, it is our willingness to get down and wash the feet of our brothers and sisters that draws us out of ourselves, out of our pride, and makes us true participants at the table of the Lord. It is when we respond to need around us, no matter what that need is, that we go beyond or step beyond ourselves as Jesus did. We step beyond when we respond and we cooperate with the civil authorities and what they are asking us to do at this time in which the world faces the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We step beyond when we act against abuse and brutality, rape and violence. We step beyond when we reach out to the poor, reach out to the hopeless, challenge unjust structures, welcome refugees, and reject xenophobia. When we welcome the divorced and the brokenhearted back to the table of the Lord, when we seek to break the racist attitudes that so often pervade our South African society, when we seek to ensure that women are treated with respect and dignity given their rightful place, when we welcome LGBTI people, these are our brothers and sisters with soiled feet just like ours that we are asked to wash. These are the soiled feet that help us on the path to our own salvation. But the gospel doesn't end there. We are told that Jesus loved them to the end. The very stepping beyond that Jesus does, the process of passing over, is because he loves to the end. Stepping outside the limits of one's closed individuality is only possible with the power of love. The end for Jesus is his total self-giving, which we will see tomorrow on the cross. And it is only possible because he loves to the end. He gives himself totally unto death. It is his love to the end that remolds his whole being, the same love which can remold our whole being, so that we too 
can step beyond in all the places we need to step beyond. When we love to the end and allow that love to transform us, when we choose to love to the end, we break through into the divine. And indeed, the divine breaks into our soiled humanity. The Bishop of Rome, Emeritus Benedict XVI, in his book on Holy Week, describes the washing of feet as stepping beyond, driven by love to the end. And he says that this is a divine act of creation. It is the power of love to the end and the courage to step beyond which heralds the beginning, the advent of a new creation. In the washing of the feet, Jesus shows us how we bring to birth a new creation. And that's what we are called to do today. How we relate to each other in this time of social distress and social distancing, how we relate to the poor and to beggars, to women, to the abandoned, to atheists, to people of different religions, to refugees and people of other races, to LGBTI people, to the divorced and to the blind, to the deaf, the disabled, those who have HIV. These are all the measure of how much we truly understand this Last Supper and the Lord's invitation to love to the end. Our engagement, or lack thereof, measure how far we step beyond, how far we love to the end. And therefore, perhaps soberly, our fitness to celebrate, to sit, and to be tonight around the table of the Lord. And so, friends, now we take a moment, wherever you are, to bring our own prayers, the needs of our world, the needs of our own hearts before the Lord as we pray together our intercessions. Lord our God, we have heard your word. We have heard your invitation. We ask you now to listen to our prayers. We pray for Christian communities of every kind and wherever they are at this time. Like the first believers, may we be faithful to the teaching of the apostles, the common life, the breaking of bread in spiritual communion and the prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the hungry and the homeless who have no place at the table of life. May we reach out to them as sisters and brothers and make room for them at our tables. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the people near and far who are suffering from the devastation of COVID-19. May God heal the sick, comfort the dying, console those who grieve, and give renewed strength to medical workers who tirelessly seek to step beyond themselves in loving service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. Let us pray for all those who have been hurt by the church through words and action. Let us pray especially for those who have been abused by clergy and religious. 
We pray that they would find a place at the Lord's table and also the healing they desire. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves as we enter into these solemn days of prayer. May our remembrance of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection confirm us in faith and renew us in mission. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In a moment of silence, let us now recall the Lord's invitation to wash each other's feet in service. Let us bring the needs of our neighbors to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our humble prayers, those we have spoken, but the prayer too that rests in the heart of each one of us. Answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is our Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. This is God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of His name. For the good and good of all in His holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels, and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
holy, Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, Duncan, his assistant, and all those who are holding true, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating this most sacred day, on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this offering of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his most sacred and holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, 
the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, who invites us around this table, tells us to call God our Father. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, wherever you may be, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 